This video is to show you how to do the runs test and the autocorrelations test for problem three uh, of chapter 13 of the Decision Analysis and Decision Making textbook by Albright and Winston. Uh, very similar to problem number one. I have a video for that one as well. Uh, okay, so this problem is uh, about the number of employees on payroll. We're trying to test if that number is truly um, <clears throat> random or not by doing a runs test and an autocorrelations test. And P13 underscore 03 is what we need. Now, if you don't have that file, uh, if you're not in my online course, uh, no worries. Just watch along here. This should be enough for you to learn how to do the runs test and the autocorrelations test without having this example file. Okay, so we just need some data to do this test. I'm going to go to the add-ins, Stat Pro. This is, uh, I'm working with Excel 2016 again. So this is the add-in for Excel 2016. It was the same as Excel 2010 and 64-bit Excel. They all work uh, with this same add-in. Um, okay, and to do the runs test and the autocorrelations test, go to add-in, step pro, time series, and runs test. We'll start with that one. Go select your data. Include the titles when you select things, the headers here. Click OK. OK and number of employees was what we want. I could have just selected the number of employees as well, just so you know. Mean of the series is good, so just click OK. And you can choose where you want it. I'm just going to put it in the same worksheet as what I'm working on right now. And there it is. OK, little note here, same as problem one. Uh, if this number is under 0 0.05, you reject the null hypothesis of randomness. So conclusion, the number of employees is not random based on the runs test. So we rejected the null hypothesis of randomness, meaning we are concluding the data is not random. Second test to do for randomness is called the autocorrelations test. Now, if the problem didn't specifically specify to go do the autocorrelations test as well, you could just stop here. Uh, this is good enough. As soon as you fail one of these tests, you could safely conclude the data is not random. So uh, there would be no real reason to keep going with the autocorrelations unless this guy was okay, unless this is over 0 0.05. Or, of course, in this case, the textbook asked you to go do the autocorrelations test as well. So that's, again, why we're doing it. Um, so add-ins, stat pro, time series forecasting, and autocorrelations. Go highlight your data. So again, you just need the number of employees. You can highlight everything if you want. One note, do not highlight any blank cells. No blank cells, just the data. Include the headers. And it will suggest a number of lags. Just click OK on that. It'll always be good how many it suggests for now. Uh, and let's put this output right, oops, sorry, right here. Click OK, click OK, and here we go. And surprise, surprise, we have lots of red bars uh, or highlighted autocorrelation values. That means that these um, lags are significant, or if you will, we have a lag one autocorrelation. We have a lag two autocorrelation, a lag four, etc., etc. So that tells us that our data are dependent on previous ones, meaning they are not random. If there's any dependency, the data are not random. So same conclusion, number of employees is not random, in this case based on the auto correlations test. Beautiful. And there we go.